Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Code with Sally. The sessions are running every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, this session will be recorded live. Uh, I'm just recording um, some videos to cover um, what we covered in the first three sessions because we didn't uh, record from the beginning. Um, so I'm happy to have you watching now the video and looking forward to seeing the sessions um, on Thursday. Uh, first of all, let me tell you a bit about myself. Um, my name is Sally Elgul. I'm located in um, Canada, Toronto area. Uh, my education background is in general computer science, master degree computer science, and even before uh, university, I was coding and uh, my passion was always um, coding and playing with code and learning how to code. So I'm happy to be running these sessions because I want to share my passion about coding with everyone and help everyone who's interested to learn more about it. Uh, I started Salesforce in 2010. So I've been coding with Salesforce since that time, uh, different roles between uh, junior developers, senior lead developers, and some, and sometimes as well acting as the technical architect on the projects. Um, I love learning, and uh, I'm sure during the sessions I'll be learning a lot from you, everyone. And uh, I'm a mother of two, so I'm a busy mom working, uh, but uh, I'll be here for you anytime you have questions. Uh, just I may be a bit busy and I will be late uh, replying, uh, but I will reply for sure. You can reach out to me on Slack or LinkedIn, whichever you prefer. Uh, and um, I would love everyone to feel free to ask questions. Uh, if you'd be shy asking the questions because we are recording the sessions, you can um, ask me the questions on the chat. Uh, I'd be monitoring the session, uh, the chat uh, during the session and be answering the questions and it will be anonymous. Uh, so don't worry about that. Um, and uh, I want to introduce you to my blog, um, blog called Code with Sally, uh, codewithsally.com. Have a look at it. Uh, I keep adding content uh, along the way. Uh, there is some uh, blogs related to the um, Salesforce basics and for beginners. So I think it would be helpful for you to take a look at it and come back with questions anytime. And if there is a topic you wish to see more explanation about it on the blog, let me know as well. Uh, the session structure would be an hour long. Uh, it will be running once per week. Uh, we'll try to have 45 minutes between explanation or live coding, debugging together. Uh, so that's the, um, the duration of the session. Uh, and the rest of the 15 minutes will be mainly uh, for answering questions. And based on the experience or like based on the three times so far we had, um, usually we take five minutes at the beginning, giving some people, uh, people time to join the session. Uh, and I give them anyone on the call if they have questions to add, to ask and I answer it at the time. And also we'll have uh, 10 minutes at the end, if so, uh, to answer questions. And during the explanation as well, feel free to stop me and ask questions. Uh, the purpose or the intent of the audience for, this, for these sessions, at least for now, is beginners or people who are just starting uh, to learn more about Salesforce. Um, not Salesforce in general, but Salesforce coding. I assume that you have some basic knowledge about Salesforce and how to use it. You have been an admin for a bit. Um, so if you are brand brand new to Salesforce um, at all, and you don't know how to use it as an admin, uh, I'd run another session uh, on Sundays uh, with the um, Seth Minton. Uh, it's for teens and we talk about Salesforce and we teach them. It's uh, with Trailblazing Teen. Um, you can join even if you are not a teen. In these sessions, we focus more on the admin side and we explain what is Salesforce and how to use it. Uh, but the intention here is for anyone who knows Salesforce, but they are new to the coding. Um, and again, because we are in, assuming everyone is new to coding, we'll be going slowly. 
uh, we'll start with basics and each session we'll keep adding to it. And we try to use examples or explain how we can use it in real life scenarios. Um, the communication is a key. So anytime uh, you have questions, you have to ask, because if you don't ask it, I won't answer it. You won't understand more. And there is no like easy questions or questions that I'm shy to ask. Uh, I'm sure if you have the question, someone else on the call have it too. Uh, so feel free to ping me anytime during the session or after the session if you have questions. And as I said, it's a learning curve for me and you. And uh, we'll have fun in it. Just uh, interact as much as you can and don't be shy to ask questions. Uh, first of all, let's see, like, again, we are saying here, we are considering everyone here is new to coding. So first of all, what is coding? Like, if you never did um, technical stuff or coding, you may wonder, you have an idea, but in general, like you can think about it as a, a manual or step-by-step -step, uh, instructions that we give to a the computer or to a robot to perform something. Like if I have a small robot that uh, does nothing except like telling the robot to move forward, backward, so they receive the instructions and follow it. Like uh, the vacuum machines that go around the house and clean the house. That's a, a kind of a robot that we send uh, some instructions and step-by-step -step to help them um, cover the whole area and clean everything. Um, another thing as well to think about is uh, like languages, human language. We have, each of us can have our own language, Arabic, French, Spanish, it's all human languages. Uh, but if I don't know Spanish, I won't understand it, uh, but other people will. So it's a way for human to speak to each other, the languages. The same with uh, programming and uh, robots, we have the same idea. We have different languages, programming language, and not everyone understand it. Like for each purpose, we have a language or each system, they ha have its own language. The same with Salesforce. Salesforce has its own uh, programming language to understand or for us in a way to give it instructions and uh, Salesforce knows how to handle the instructions we give it to. Uh, another way, and we learn more about this while we are working on our next sessions, is flowcharts. Flowcharts in general is like a graphical interface, like or presentation, some shapes as you can see on the screen, uh, to represent a step-by-step -step or a logic that you want to do. Like for example, the example we have here is a way for you to figure out if a number is odd or even. So we expect you to enter a number and then we do the mod and we check if it's uh, zero. Yes, we go to the, um, uh, it's an even number message. No, we go to the odd. So the same way, like while we are working, we'll try to get the flavor how thinking, how we can think first about the flow chart uh, and then how we convert it to code. And usually that's an, a good skill to learn or to know how to do it because sometimes when you go uh, in a real life job, you have complex scenarios that you want to solve for and there is nothing easier than drawing it on the paper uh, and thinking out loud, like, am I missing some validations? Am I missing some scenarios? Are there any edge cases that I don't have in my logic? Before jumping and writing the code in Salesforce, or at least that's what sometimes I, I sometimes do. Like, maybe sometimes we'll feel like that uh, is so much harder than just writing the code in the first go. But um, it's something you you need to learn, and it's up to you to use it or not. Um, next, let's see, uh, here we are talking about what's the difference between front end and back end development. And that's something you'll keep hearing in the jobs as well. Like, uh, sometimes companies are looking for front end developer versus a back end developers. Um, to be honest, like most of my experience or the years I worked with Salesforce, we didn't have that obvious, this like 
differentiation between front end and back end development but some companies does so it just for you to know what's the difference and what each of them mean so the front end is handles what the user can see the ui the user interface and there is different ways to do that in salesforce in terms of technology like you will hear people talking about uh, lightning web components lwc or aura components or visual force pages so those are technologies or languages related to salesforce that helps you build the user interface uh, that you'll see on the screen uh, the back end focus on what happens be behind the scenes like when you click on a button uh, we want to do complex uh, validations and send an email and create some records that can be done in some cases it can be done with the front end but like let's say now it's all done by the back end so something behind the scene that you cannot see on the screen something you do behind the scenes and the user cannot see and you go to the server and get data and handle it so let's see like um don't worry if like you don't see the the, the difference now like you learn more about it when we go uh, deeper uh, with apex or like with the other uh, technologies in salesforce here i have just uh, a quick example uh, to show you uh, what it means to have a back end or front end uh, here i open a developer edition that I created um, and, and let's see, I add it on the account. Okay. Let's see, yeah, it's on the lightning. Switched lightning. I don't know why it's on the classic, <laughs> but uh, let's go to the home screen I have here on the lightning. So you'll see here on the component um, that I have on the screen called my simple component. My simple component is just an example that I wanted to build to show you the differences between the two. So let's say here and say Sally and Boom. So I have a text box, enter my name here, a greeting message came to me on the screen. It's a simple component. Usually you build more complicated ones, but it just to give you an idea, like the, the technology used here is LWC, Lightning Web Components, and that's what controls that I see here, the label, the input text, the message that you see. So that's what we call the Lightning Web Component. And usually you'll see here it has like, three files attached to it don't worry about it we learn more about it in the future and then we have here the class the apex class uh, that's the back end and again what i did in this component could be done 100 percent with lightning web components and no back end is needed i just built it for the purpose to show you how the apex would look like and that's what we will be learning and we'll start learning about apex first um, so before we start, I want just to highlight that um, the expectation that you would have uh, a Salesforce environment, so you can register for the developer edition here. Uh, you fill the form, you enter your name, you choose a user, and you create it. So you have an org, a developer org, like the one I have here, where I showed to you the um, component. Um, the other thing is that you you need to choose what's the development um, environment you'll be working on. Uh, at the beginning, we'll be using uh, the developer console, sorry, um, because we'll start with the basics. But later on, uh, we'll be using the Visual Studio Code as the uh, Visual Studio Code as our environment uh, for development. Um, so I would encourage everyone to go on Trailhead, uh, I assume as well, everyone knows here what is uh, Trailhead, but Trailhead is like an online learning um, website that you can use uh, and to learn a lot. So these two first modules will talk about how you can install the Visual Studio Code and how you can make it ready for Salesforce. So I would recommend that you go ahead and do that. 
at the beginning of the sessions, we'll be working with developer console uh, to make it easier for everyone to follow. But later on, we'll be moving to Visual Studio Code. So take your time, um, install it. Uh, you may face some issues. If that's the case, ping me as well, and I will try my best to support you with the issues you are facing. Uh, next. So the next topic we want to talk about is Apex. As we said, like we have the front end and we have the back end. In the front end, we said we have Lightning Web Components, we have Aura Components, and we have Visual Force pages. For the back end, we have Apex, uh, and it's the special language we'll be using to tell Salesforce what to do. Uh, as we said, like we give robots, we give computer steps to follow and instructions what to do. It's the language we'll be using to instruct Salesforce what to do. Someone may ask, like, why are we using Apex? Um, Apex is really needed. Uh, as you know, Salesforce is always like encouraging you to do points and clicks and admin stuff like out of the box first. But some cases you would really need to do an Apex code. Like if what you want to do is too complex and cannot be done with the out of the box point and clicks, or if you want to customize a wizard for your user instead of like creating um clicking on the an object and going to the related list to create the child record and so on like there is some requirements where you would go and say okay yeah now i need to do uh apex or i need to do an automation or run a scheduled code apex uh to run once per week to clear some records that you don't need anymore so you don't run out of space or storage or you exceed the, the limit you have. So sometimes you need it and it's very important to know the syntax and even if you are not a developer, like I remember in the first session there was a comment that uh, even if you are not a developer, um, it's it's good to know code, like it's good to see when you see code, you can tell what it does, or you know how to read it, or you know how to search further to understand what it's doing. Uh, it helps you with the discussion and it helps you to understand how the system is working. Uh, we, then we covered the variables and the variables is a very important topic. Uh, and it's very um, like essential to know how to use it or how to work with, because variables will be used over and over again with um, uh, Apex and coding and development. So it's very important to understand how to do it. Uh, I will pause until here, uh, and I will start a new uh, video talking about the variables. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, and there will be more coming. Thank you.